Welcome to today's release review. We will take a look at our first release of 2020, which is named EOS 2020.1. Uh, due to the preventive measures against the spread of the coronavirus, we will do this release review on a distance. So I'm happy to introduce to you my colleague Wesley Geestra, who's roughly 80 kilometers away from me, and my name is Bob Dijkman. In this release review, we will cover the following topics. We have improved the 4 eyes implementation in EOS. Uh, we will take a look at our new uh, export functionality for wireless offline locks. Um, we will cover the improvements in AML, and we will end this release review with our new EOS web help. So in other words, enough to talk about, let's get started. The first topic to discuss is our new 4 eyes implementation. Wesley, can you explain what the 4 eyes functionality in EOS means? Well, it's exactly what the name says it is. You need two persons to open the door. And it's also used to prevent visitors from wandering through your building uh, without their host being present. Or maybe you have areas that aren't allowed access alone. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if I remember correctly, this function was already present in EOS. So uh, what has changed? What has changed is that in the past, any person could be guided by any other person. So there was no dedicated host. Also, a lot of configuration was required to configure a link between the two persons. And on top of that, you would also require two access points for your license. Now we have improved the ease of configuration and you require just one license. And above all, the relation between the persons is made with a simple mouse click. Okay, so as an employee, I can now only guide my own visitors. Correct. Wesley, you prepared a screencast demo for us, right? Could you please start that movie? Now, all the events, settings and host uh, configuration can be done within the EOS dashboard. So here we see the events recently happened. And if we search, for example, Anna. We can see there is one person configured, which is part banana. And the 4i option is enabled. So, please allow me to introduce the improved 4i principle. In times of Corona, I was searching for some volunteers, which I luckily found in the toy box for my two-year-old son. So I would like to introduce Bart Banana, Anna Apple and Steve Strawberry. Now Bart Banana is working at Food Fantasias and he is allowed access. But today he is getting a visit from the lovely Anna Apple. But Anna Apple isn't allowed to wander through Food Fantasias by herself. And therefore, the security manager of Fruit Fantasia has configured four eyes in the required doors. So, a brief demo. Bart Banana presents his badge and he can access. So. But now he has a visitor, Anna Apple. And when she presents her badge, the authorization requires a dedicated host to present a badge as well. And then they are allowed access. Meaning Anna Apple can only go through the door with guidance of Bart Banana. But let's take another employee, Steve Strawberry. He can enter the door as well. But as Steve Strawberry isn't a host for Anna Apple. Anna Apple isn't allowed access guidance by Steve Strawberry. So Anna Apple comes to the door, presents her card. Steve comes to the same door. And as you can see, they are not allowed access. Really nice explanation, Wesley. And in the future, we will extend the four eyes functionality into the AS configuration interface visit management module, and we will make it possible to set up four eyes per carrier type. New in AOS 2020.1 is the possibility to export OSS SO entrances. 
OSSO is the open standard for wireless offline locks. Each lock gets its own site, group, and ID. Wesley, can you elaborate why this export is helpful? Sure. It used to be required to create the site, the group ID, and the door ID uh, in EOS manually, and then also create this uh, site, group, and lock ID in uh, the offline lock system. Now the configuration made in EOS can be exported and easily imported into the offline lock system. It is all based on the OSS web services, and therefore it will be compatible with all the OSS uh, compatible manufacturers, saving you the double configuration effort. Okay, that's nice. In talking about configuration effort, we also improved the usability of Amon. Amon is used by our channel partners to create the configurations for the controllers to fulfill the needs of our AOS users. Again, Wesley, can you start the short demonstration you've prepared and recorded for us? So let's have a look at the Amon improvements. In Amon, I have one controller updated to the 2021 version. And previously, if you wanted to modify your configuration, you had to open the properties and here you can modify whatever settings you like. So the unlock time or your direction of the door, etc. Um, but wouldn't it be nice if you have a easier way to access these properties? Well, let me show you the component property view or for the quick techies, the F6 button. Now, if we click the door, we have a direct access to whatever we would like to change within our component. So we can set the unlock time, we can set the direction and we can deploy. Thank you for the demonstration, Wesley. This will help our channel partners with their rollouts and give them better insights in their AMO configurations. Another new feature is the EOS Web Help. We've asked our colleague Erwin to join this uh, release review. So thank you Erwin for joining. And please, could you explain us a bit more about the EOS Web Help? So let me briefly introduce myself. I'm Erwin, one of the technical writers from NADOP Security Management. And today I'm here to show you an exciting step forward we've made with the EOS documentation. EOS has a lot of features, so getting the information you need can be a bit of a struggle. But we found a way to make this much easier for you. How? We moved from a user manual in PDF format to an online help. And this is how that will look. When you open the help, you'll see a search bar and a table of contents. You can click on topics to open them. You can use the previous and next buttons to browse through the topics in the order of the table of contents. If you're looking at this on a smaller window, most images automatically scale. When the menu disappears to make room for the smaller screen space, you can still access it when you click on the menu icon. You can choose which type of information you want to see with the filter icon. For example, by default, the dashboard help doesn't show information meant for system administrators. But when you select the System Administrator checkbox, the widget topic now also shows how to set up this widget in EOS itself. Then there's the search bar. The search recognizes different words for the same thing. So if you search for badge, it also finds identifier. If you want to find badge only, just enter it in quotes. The found text is highlighted in the topic. You can remove the highlighting with this icon. But to be honest with you, you probably don't need the search anyway. Just click on the part of an image to go to the correct topic. With these improvements, we're sure that you can get all the information you need quickly and efficiently. Thank you, Erwin. That looks like a great improvement for our customers. I have a question for you. Which PDF documents are replaced in the web help? That's a good question. This help replaces the dashboard and EOS user manuals. Is the web help available for all languages? At the moment, it's still a pilot of the online help. So it's available in English only. The other languages still use the PDF format. 
but we plan to have the dashboard help for French, German, Dutch and Polish ready by the next major release. Great, thank you Erwin. So again, a very nice EOS release. Uh, the easiest way to get EOS 2020.1 is to enter our EOS Upgrade Assurance program. Thank you for watching and see you next time.